Hello church, peace be to you. Hope the world's treating you good. Uh, it's Josh Turner back out here in Washington, uh, here with the big, big dum dum. Right? Good job, buddy. Good job. You're a very good boy. That's a good dog. So I've got a situation that comes up every once in a while with this big dummy. Um, and every once in a while, so his breed is the English Mastiff. Sometimes their eyesight, as they get older, it doesn't go so well. And they get worried about things they can't see too well. So his whole life, he's been he's been doing one thing. And now now he's, he has a hard time with it, right? So let me show, show you what it is. The dreaded dog door. So he's been using this dog door his whole life. And every once in a while, about once a year or so, now he starts to get a little worried about it. He won't go through it. He won't let himself out. These kind of things. He'll stand at it and cry because he's not sure. And part of this is, is just because he's a little dumb, right? So he doesn't really, because he can't see it, he doesn't remember what's on the other side. He's not sure what to do about that, okay? All right, buddy, do you want to show him? Okay. So if I want him to just go through the dog door, he'll hesitate if I'm on this side of the door. If instead I go on the other side of the door, no hesitation. Let me show you. Wait, wait, uh -uh. wait. Okay, so I made him wait outside. He's not happy about that. Garm, come here. Oh, what a good boy. Okay, let's do it again. Let's do it one more time. Stay here. <laughs> wait. Wait. Okay, come on. Oh, what a good boy. Okay, so I know that was a long explanation for what I'm about to say. So that's his, that's one of his little problems, right? Now this happens with us humans and especially with us Christians. So what ends up happening is, what, what ends up happening is that we see a door sometimes, and because we're not sure what's on the other side of this door, we won't go, or we hesitate, or we stand and cry and worry about what we're supposed to be doing. Oh, fat, fat donkeys. No eating today. So these guys are on diets, so that's why they got the muzzles on. Oh, I know, Francois. It's horrible. I know, little donkey. It's horrible. Sorry, guys. Not today. Oh, good boy, Garm. Okay. So, the way this works out with the Christian, I think, is there's a ton of times in my own life, and my close, my close brothers in Christ can attest to this, where I've wrote to somebody and said, you know, I feel like God's calling me to do something. I just don't know what the something is. And, you know, luckily... My, my brothers in Christ are good brothers. And what they told me was, if God's calling, you better not say no. But I didn't know what, what God's calling me to do, right? I had this, this feeling inside where I need to participate. I can't just be this passive member of God's kingdom, right? Now, I'm not saying being a passive member of the kingdom is a sin. I'm saying for myself, my heart was, was heavy, I felt like I needed to, to do something. And I did this a little bit when I was younger. So when I was about 21, I opened up a Christian tattoo shop, right? Because that's I, I wanted to participate. It didn't end up working out. I mean, I had to close it down. But we did what we could while we could. But so for so long, I was waiting for the correct the correct way that I was supposed to participate with God in this, in this kingdom that he's got. Right. <clears throat> and it took a prompting by somebody that was just a, Hey, could you say hello? And when I was willing to do that, the spirit took me and said, okay, talk about this. This is what I'm putting on your heart. And when I said it, and I recorded it, and I sent it away, 
that's when these videos were born. These Just Josh videos were born because I needed to talk. And at that moment, I didn't know what to talk about. But the Spirit led me to talk about the relationship between God and dogs and humans and God. The point of this is I had to say yes to making the video and I had to take steps forward in making that video before I was participating. Now, I'm only participating a little bit, but it was scary. And so, so many of us get caught on the other side of the dog door because we're not sure what's through what's not what's through that door. What if I get through that door it's worse? Or what if I go through the door and I'm I've actually failed? I wasn't supposed to do it this way. The thing about our fears is fear doesn't come from our king. One of the commandments he gives the most is do not be afraid. And so if I want to participate, then I have to pick up my own cross and I have to walk. Jesus didn't say, stand here and I'll put my cross on you or put your cross on me and I'll carry your cross for you. He didn't say that. He said, pick up your cross, follow me. So if the spirit inside of you is groaning to be used, don't worry about how God's going to use what you do. You don't really get an option in that. Instead, like we're called to be, be the light on the hill. The light on the hill does not turn its light on and then say, these are the only people who will receive my light or see my light. Or this is what people will do once I've given them light. Nope. You're just supposed to give the light. What happens from there is up to the people who receive the light and God. So... I'll leave you with this, church. If you're afraid, sometimes that's the appropriate response. Sometimes it's the appropriate emotion. But it doesn't mean you have to stay afraid. If you wanted to start a podcast about God, go do it. You don't need $100 microphones. You can probably do it with the phone in your hand or the computer you're sitting at. If you want to learn Greek... Go start. If, if you want to start a mission, if you want to start a church, whatever you, you want to do that you feel your spirit is calling you to do, don't worry about if you drop the cross. Jesus didn't say, pick up your cross and follow me, and if you ever drop it, you can't follow me anymore. He said, pick up your cross and follow me. I'm sure that following comes with a lot of stumbling and falling down. But if you're willing to walk, he will use you and you will no longer have to live in fear. Now, if you have expectations of what it looks like once you start participating, you should throw them expectations out because God doesn't work too well with your expectations. He doesn't care how you think this should go. He wants you to participate in him being the king. Participate. Do that thing, whatever it is. And don't worry. Read the scripture. Do what your spirit's telling you to do. Step out. Go through that dog door. Your master's waiting on the other side to say, welcome in. He wants you to participate. Don't think the educated people should participate more than you. Don't think the preachers get to participate more than you or the song leaders or those who know Greek or whatever it is. You get to participate as much as you are willing to participate until God tells you no more. 
I can't wait to see it, church. And for all of you that are already participating, thank you. You've helped bring me to participation and I'm sure millions of others. But for those of you who are waiting, if you're watching this, well, go ahead and start. Even if it's just a little bit today. But as you go, go through that dog door and don't be afraid. Because what you don't realize is your master was with you on the other side of the door you were on. And he'll be with you when you go through the door. I love you all. Go in peace, church.